So I just watched the 2019 Watchmen series. Yes, I know I'm a little bit behind on that, but I loved it and I have some thoughts. So let's talk about it. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. The beginning of the 2019 Watchmen show centers around the real-life 1921 Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre of Black Wall Street. We see a young Will Reeves navigated through the bloodshed and eventually put in a car to escape. His parents' fate sealed for the worse. It's a powerful scene that really hits home emotionally and encapsulates a major theme of this show. Will Reeves experienced this terrible massacre and it stuck with him forever. This show looks into that more deeply and explores the effects of racism on the family lineage. Still with me? Let's look even further. See, this show centers not only around Angela Abar, but her entire lineage of this show spans over a hundred plus years. See, we see various generations of the Abar heritage and the effects racism has had on their lives. Angela's great granddad, OB, was killed in the Tulsa Massacre. Angela's granddad, Will Reeves experiences blatant racism on the police force. Every generation of the Abar line, and frankly, every generation of black people in America has had to deal with racism. The interesting part is how this show shows how Angela and her descendants all decide to navigate racism differently, and they're all left with burdens that affect their future line. Especially since this is such a mainstream show, there were probably many people watching this who had never thought about how racism can hinder a generation past surface level thinking. But Watchmen shows this on a personal level. So let's delve into each generation of Angela's lineage and explore what Watchmen is trying to show us about the generational trauma of racism. OB Williams is Angela's great grandfather. We don't know too much about him, but we see enough of his life to realize how prejudice has influenced it. First we see him in the military fighting in World War I, most likely to prove his worth to America. It's known that many black people fought for the US in various wars of the 20th century to prove themselves as worthy, only to come home and be treated like secondhand citizens. This show tackles this idea head on by having OB receive a Nazi pamphlet saying almost these exact words. After the war, we see OB and his family decides to prosper among people that look like him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Black Wall Street was an incredible mecca of black excellence and prosperity. I'll add some links in the description if you want to read more about it. OB and his family seem to be doing okay for themselves in the limited clips we see about them, but even segregated, the white man could not bear to see black people prospering like they were, and the KKK made sure Tulsa was destroyed in the infamous riots of 1921. So during OB's life, we see him try to assimilate into American culture through the military, and even segregate himself in Black Wall Street and racism finds its way into both sectors. And when Obi and his wife were killed in the massacre, his next descendant, his son, is left to live with no parents, no family, and memories of the massacre. Already a tough burden to bear into the future. From a young age, Will is already imbued with racial trauma from experiencing the Tulsa riots and growing up without parents. Will tries combating his racial trauma by fighting it, literally. After realizing how corrupt the police force is, even almost being hanged by fellow officers, he takes matters into his own hands by becoming the vigilante hooded justice. He puts white makeup around his eyes to hide his black skin, and he lets all the anger of his past and present out by beating criminals to a pulp. While he does do some good for citizens, Will is a vigilante for himself and it consumes him. And no matter how hard he tries either being a legit officer of the law or in the gray as a vigilante, he can't capture the white supremacist group known as Cyclops. In his journey, we see him try to attack racism head on, but he can never defeat it. And the burden he places on himself being hooded justice distorts him to a point where his wife and son leave him. Now his young son will grow up without a father, fearing what a mask can do to a person. So once again, this lineage is heavily impacted by racism and is stagnant in generational progress. We get the least amount of screen time and information on Angela's dad, Marcus Abar, so a lot of this will be my interpretation of the character. We see he is a military soldier stationed in Vietnam who has an estranged relationship with both his parents and never mentions them to young Angela. Angela's dad is interesting because we don't see directly how racism plays into his life like his grandfather and father's stories. 
but he is still indirectly scarred from the racial traumas of his descendants. He wants no business fighting racism and letting it consume him like his father. So he enlists in the military similar to his grandfather, trying to prove his worth on the battlefield and not with a mask like his dad. I'm not sure he had too much of a choice being stationed in Vietnam, but it is a way to start over away from the racial trauma that broke his family as a child in the States. However, being in Vietnam turns from a fresh start to a tragic ending after Marcus and his wife are killed in a terrorist bombing. This is still indirectly tied to the trauma of his past because if the situation with his father was better, maybe he may have never joined the military and been in Vietnam. Now, young Angela has to grow up without parents in a different country, with no connections to her past, money, property, or anything. The one who is supposed to continue the Abar name starts with nothing. So Angela is born to a family lineage that has been ravaged by racism, both physically and emotionally. Angela's dad intentionally disconnected their immediate family from their past, and Angela chooses to navigate her family's racial trauma by not inquiring anything about her past. Between her parents tragically dying, the accident with her husband, wink wink, and dealing with 21st century racism in the 7th Cavalry, Angela wants no business with a past that will only bring her more trauma. Angela knows that she's from Tulsa and that's it. But is that okay? And as the story explores very well, what does it mean to not know your past and how does it affect your present? See, Angela is angry. She's angry because of the White Knight. She's angry about the Seventh Cavalry. And she carries the anger from her past too. Not having parents, not knowing her grandparents, just not having family in general. So as Angela explores more about her past through the nostalgia pills, she finally gets to meet her grandparents and great grandparents. She experiences all the hardships they went through, and for the first time, she knows where she comes from and who her family is. After learning about her past, knowing the past allows her to come to finally understand her anger and break free from hiding behind a mask. Because as Will Reeve says, you can't heal under a mask, Angela. Wounds need air. Back again. Thanks for watching. No likings, no subscribing. Just thanks for watching. You took some time out of your day to watch my video, so I really appreciate it. So, see you next time.